Okay, welcome back to another tutorial. Up to the time presents AutoCAD basics. Today we'll be learning about the fundamentals of AutoCAD. So what is AutoCAD? Let's just briefly explain this. Drafting involves the accurate drawing of lines, arcs, curves, and geometrical shapes on paper or on the computer. Drafting on the computer is referred to as using CAD, computer-aided drafting. This method involves using commands that are easy to remember or selecting icons from a toolbar. We will go through all the common commands that we will use in this particular tutorial and provide a method that allows you to easily remember these commands. So one of the first things we need to understand is lines, because that's mainly what we'll be using while we'll be drawing in AutoCAD. So I'm going to close this and bring up another something to help you guys remember these shortcuts here. And why do I call them shortcuts? That's the first thing. Let me explain why I call them shortcuts. If I want to draw a line, there are several options I have. I can go up here to the tool, the menu bar, and I can select line. By just looking at the icon or reading the icon and it says line, I can select there and I can come here and start. And if I want to specify a distance, I then type in whatever distance I want. After clicking at the point, I want to start. So I'm gonna type in 100 and hit enter. That line is now 100, I can hit escape and that closes the command. So that line there is at 100 millimeters. Yeah, if I touch the line, I can look at, I can, I realize three things happen. I realize there are points that I can click on to stretch this line. So this at the beginning, you can also stretch at the end. And I can also hover here in the middle and that is the center. And what can I do here with this? I can use that to drag the line, move it wherever I want to. If I grab the line from an end point, I can only move that end point. If I grab it from another end point, I move that end. If I grab it in the middle, I actually move the line itself. So the shortcut now, that's one method for accessing the tool line, that join tool. If I go to the shortcut now, I can type L-I-N-E, and that brings up line. It's right there. Press enter, and I start drawing. I specify my first point, and I start drawing. And that's it. Now, um, that's too long. Why do I want to type the word L-I-N-E every time I want a line? So AutoCAD has provided us with some shortcuts and they're called aliases, right? Where you would just type in these specific commands and you will get your tool, your, your drawing tool that you want. And the key command for line is L. Usually how AutoCAD works, they usually give you the first two letters of the word of the command that you want or the first letter. So in this instance, we use L to represent line, that's the shortcut. So if you type L on your keyboard, it goes directly to line. And you can hit enter, and then you can specify your first point and draw. And obviously type in how much, this, the distance you want and you will get a line. So let me just draw a square here now by using the line tool. L for line, enter, and I draw a square. So I want 40, and I go up, push the control, sorry, the mouse up, 40, push the mouse to the left, 40. And then if I want to end this, I can hit C and it goes back to the beginning without me having to bring it there. C closes that. Okay, so that's a square by using the line command and I use the shortcut L on the keyboard. I'm going to now delete that. Now actually I'm gonna leave that there. Let's move on to the second command that we have here, which is move. Now, if I want to move this square, I can click all three points. And then what do I do? How can I move this? Uh, right. <laughs> it's very difficult to move this. Now, we can come out here 
And look at this icon. That's our icon for move. And it allows us to move objects from point to point or snap to a specific point that we desire. So we want to move this object. I first select it and I'm going to blue grab. I'm going to select by starting, by starting on the left and then coming to the right. That's a blue grab. I've selected my object and I can go up here to the icon and it says move, click move. And I have options. Look at my options. I can grab it at an end point, basically the corners of our square. Or I can grab it at one of the midpoints of the line. I can't grab it in the middle. I can only grab it at these midpoints here or the end point. So I'm going to grab it at an end point. And look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to snap it to this midpoint of my title block. So I've moved it from position to position. That's what move does. <clears throat> now let us draw a circle. Now the hot key or shortcut key for circle is C. Type C and you get circle. Or you can go up here and you can select it from the menu. And if you select it from the menu, there are multiple options for drawing a circle. You can draw a circle using the radius method. Um, we know radius is half the diameter, and it indicates this here, look. Or we can draw a circle using the diameter method, distance across the circle. So, or we can use two points to get a circle. I wouldn't really recommend these options here. Two points, three point tangent, tan tan radius, tan tan tan. I, I just wouldn't recommend those, so I'm not even going to confuse um, the viewers, with those, I will recommend join a circle using these first two options, radius or diameter. So let us try join a circle using radius. So I'm going to use the same 40 again. So I'm going to hit, well, it's already there, C for circle, and it asks me to specify center point. So I just choose that point, and as I open, you can see this dotted line, which tells me that I'm joined in the radius mode. So I just need to put in the distance that I want, and I'm going to go 40. Yeah, that's the circle radius 40. Now let's draw a circle using diameter. So I'm going to go here and select circle, sorry, center, diameter. Come here and look at this line. The line, the dash line is outside the circle. So that tells me I'm drawing in diameter mode, whereas before the dash line was inside the circle. Let me just go back over that for you. Let's look at joining radius mode. The dashed line is always within the circle. That's it there. Now, if I go to the diameter mode, the dashed line is outside the circle. So that's the subtle difference that indicates the two modes. So let's put in the same 40 for diameter and we're gonna look at this. Look at how small that circle is because we've put in 40 diameter and the other one was 40 radius. So we use the same number 40, just um, one is the diameter and one is the radius. So I'm gonna leave those two there. Um, and again, if you want to use the shortcut for doing all this, it's C for circle, enter, and then once you get here, you can start by selecting. And if you want to change over, it defaults by starting in a radius mode. If you want to switch over to the diameter mode, you have to press D. If you look at the command bar, D is the only character in a different color. So that tells us that there's a secondary option there for us if you want to explore it, and that would be the diameter option. So press D is how you would switch over to the diameter mode. Um, and yeah, so you put in the distance, or you put in the measurement accordingly. So that circle, and now let's move to copy. Okay, so if I want to make replicas of these, everything here, I don't want to draw them over again. I can grab everything by selecting and then typing CO, and that's a shortcut for copy, enter. And I can just grab at any point. I can grab the circle from the center point. I can grab a circle from a perpendicular point, from the tangent. I can even grab the square but i'm going to grab the small circle and i'm just going to copy this where am i going to copy it uh, i think i'm just going to copy it right here yeah. yeah so i made a copy 
one of the circles intersect each other. And uh, yeah, so that's how we copy. We just seal to copy. If I wanted to use the icon, I can come in here and that's it there, copy. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at offset. What offset is? Okay. So offset is not a drawing tool per se. It's an editing tool. I think I have explored the drawing tools. I've explored, no, I need one more drawing tool to go. I've explored lines. I've explored circles. I now need to explore um, the shapes. So I'm going to first go to the rectangle. Click it here. And if I want a rectangle, we know rectangle, um, two sides are, the two sides are going to be different. The length and the width are going to be completely different. So let's just come up with two different numbers to make this example work. Let's use 50 and 85, yeah. So I'm gonna first select my first point, click here. And then if I type 50, then I go comma 85. And that's my rectangle, just like that. 50 is from here to here, 50 is the height, and 85 is the length. Now it's a block. What I mean by that is a complete shape. And like what I did up here to create my square where I drew four lines and connected them. Um, this comes in as a complete shape. That's what I mean, that's the difference. So I can even draw a square using this method too. The shortcut for the rectangle tool, yes, they call it rectangle tool, but you can draw squares by using a rectangle tool. REC, this is one of the rare instances where we have to put in, put Put in three characters to get a command, right? REC. Anyway, that's our rectangle tool. Um, let's move on from there. Now, if we want a polygon, we can just click the arrow down on our rectangle tool in the menu and then select the polygon. And uh, they're gonna ask you some questions, like first, how many sides do you want? So let's create a five-sided polygon, which is a pentagon. So I'm gonna select five, enter, and uh, they're gonna ask you another question. They're gonna ask you to specify the center uh, of the polygon or the edge. So I'm gonna go E for edge, and this is the one which I prefer using. Um, if I want my polygon to have equal sides, this, so this is a regular polygon, where all the sides are going to be equal. Yeah, let's say I want a side of 70, which is my number that I'm going to use for all my sides. I can just start at a point. I've already clicked there as my point, and I just draw it out, and then I just hit enter. Oh, no, I should 70, enter, right. And that's it there. Once again, I can move this. So I can move it so we all can see this properly. I can move these circles too. So we all can see these things properly. Yeah. So that's one way to get a polygon. Um, there are other ways to get this polygon. Let me try that now again. So I go to a polygon, right? And I want a six-sided polygon. So I'm going to hit six, enter. And uh, this time, I am not going to use edge. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select my starting point and I'm going to select the option inscribe. So I'm going to go I for inscribe, enter. Now this inscribe works like a radius. Um, say I were, was given the distance across the size of the polygon um, size, I can then punch in that distance here in a radius and get that. So let's work with a radius of 50. Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna move this slightly outside. And let's focus on this one here now. If I go DIM and pull a dimension, you will see that I put, yes, I know I punch in 50. Here to there, across there is 100. So say I was given that information and I wanted to recreate that. 
that's what I would have to do. I have to go and select my polygon, six sides, enter, and I would start with my um, point where I want to start, and then I would select in, I for inscribe, and I would know that across from one corner to another corner is 100, and if it is joined in this radius mode, like how we draw a circle, I would type in 50, and that's what I would, how I would get that. Now there, there's another option for drawing the same polygon. Let me go back here. Let me use a six-sided shape. Enter, let me select a point. And then there's an option called circumscribe about circle. Let's hit C and see what that is all about. Right, now you can see it's a similar option, but if I type in 50, Look at what will happen. This polygon would stand up. I'm going to type 50. This polygon is going to be slightly different. Let's look at that. I use the same 50. And look, these polygons are bigger because. All right, these polygons are bigger. Just wanted to show you that. Um, This is one 15 and that is a hundred. So by using the circumscribe and type in 50, I get that 150. Um, by using the inscribe and type in 50, I get this. I more would work with the inscribe rather than the circumscribe. So if I were drawing a polygon, okay, let me show you another option. Say I wanted this distance. This is where edge comes in. So I'm going to go DIM. That's the shortcut for dimension. Um, say I wanted that distance of 50, all right? Which is the same thing that I did here by typing in 50, which gives me um, all these distances are 50. Let me just prove that by doing that. Oh there, I will have to use a line dimension there for that one right here to get it recorded there. All these sides are 50, right? Now, that's the method that I use. Let's say I wanted, okay, let's go again, polygon, six sides, and say I wanted the edge to be 50. Um, yeah, which is this side from here to here the baseline. I can actually go E for edge, select there, and then go 50. And that's another method to get the same result, right? So you can use edge or circumscribe. I would recommend, sorry, edge or inscribe. I would recommend those are the two options to use when you're drawing um, polygons. Uh, let's look at another polygon while we're here. So we could go and um, let's go a seven side issue and i'm going to go edge and that's what happens so look at that seven side shape and i'm going to go 75 is yeah that's it there and yeah isn't that beautiful anyway so we have explored all of our drawing tools we'll show you how to make uh, rectangles, squares, circles, and polygons. And here's a pentagon, and here is an octagon. Um, let's move on now to our editing tools. So in our editing tools, we would cover things like, well, I showed you copy already. Let's go into offset. Offset is a major tool used in AutoCAD. What is offset? Uh -huh. Let me go up here to, where is my offset main uh, icon? That's my offset icon there. And it creates parallel lines or parallel curves uh, at a specific distance. That's the best way to, to describe the offset tool in an essence. So let's work with this. So here is a polygon. And I want to offset this by making this bigger. So I want to make this bigger by offsetting this uh, 10. Yeah, I'm going to use 10. So I'm going to hit O. That's the tool there for offset. 
And then I'm going to type in 1010. And then I'm going to touch this. And I have an option either to offset that 10 in and create a frame inside or offset it out and create the frame outside. I'm going to go outside and then I'm going to go again outside and go, go again outside. So you get that drift there. That's how the offset tool works. Um, and all these lines are parallel. So it helps you, it kind of works as putting on a frame. So if you like the word frame to help you remember what offset does, that's what it is. Let's go to trim. Now, how can I explain trim? Let's look up here and look for the icon. So it trims objects to meet the edges of other objects. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to let you focus on that diagram that's there. I am going to trim down here and show you what that means. So I have this circle and I have this line penetrating this circle. Now I want to trim. I want to trim this line in between so that when this line touches the circle, it stops and then it starts back here, then it stops again, and then it starts back here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select, this time I'm going to green grab more on that later. I'm going to start at the opposite corner. I'm going to start on the right corner, touch the left, button, left mouse button and go to the left. That means I can see everything that my mouse just went over by just skimming over. So I'm going to do that again. Start in the bottom right hand corner, touch the mouse and just pull it. Just one touch and pull and I get to the end and then I click. Now that has all these objects here selected that I went over. That's the beauty of a green grab. And now let us trim. The command I'm going to use is TR, enter, and I'm going to simply come here, snap and snap. That's all I'm interested in trimming. And that's how the trim tool works. So I have just removed basically those two bits. I've just trimmed them away. Uh, well, I'm on trim. I think it makes sense to explain extend to because trim and extend go together. Extend, I would say, is the cousin to trim. So trim, we just remove. Extend is what it says. It extends objects to meet the edges of other objects. Simply put. Uh, so let's make a demonstration now. Okay. So this is one object here. I want to bring this line to meet this circle. So I want to extend a line from here to come somewhere. So I'm just going to, oh boy. Let's see if I can get out of the X. Now, first thing I'm going to grab, green grab, everything, yet. No, I can't do that. The reason why I can't do that is because this that's a group, so I can't extend things in a group that easily, right? Um, so what am I going to do? Oh, yeah, I remember these were individual lines, so I'm going to extend them down to touch this group. So I go EX. Select this and I select the group because those are the two parties involved. Hit enter and then I go back over the one that I want to extend. And once I hover over it, an indicator comes up letting me know this, asking me, is this what I intend basically? And I can just click to confirm. And I left click and that's confirm. And then I escape once the command is finished. So that's how we extend. Again, I can show you. I can extend this line to this circle. Show you don't always have to have a straight surface. So EX, EX to bring up the extend menu right there. Extend, enter, select the parties involved. One there, two parties. Enter, and then I have over the line I want to extend, and that's it. That's how I've extended that line. So that takes care of trim and extend. So let's come down the line here now. I am going to go to rotate. Rotate is fairly easy. So say I have this nice, lovely pentagon. And I'm going to bring it here. And I want to rotate it. Just rotate it, you know, RO to rotate. That is the hotkey. Or I can come up here to this icon. That looks like a circle with an arrow at the end. 
and rotate. So what rotating basically does, you basically are um, changing an object that's facing the north and you're changing it to face either the east, the west, or the south. That's the best way you can describe it. Change the orientation of the object um, by rotating it, rotating it to, to face a different point. So let's just go with that. So let's see this and understand what I mean. Let's put a point here. Put a point here at that top and I'm gonna rotate that point all the way down here to the south. So that point is in the north. I'm gonna to touch the point and the pentagon, RO, enter. And I want to determine where am I going to hold this to rotate it. Now I'm going to try to rotate it on what I think is the center. So I use here, and then I can just pull it and look and see as I'm rotating it, it gives me an idea of where it's going to go. And that's rotated at 180 degrees. You can see it there. And I like that. So, oh. I can't press enter, I have to click, I have to confirm it with the mouse. It's something that I forgot. Let me specify my point, my bogus center point. And yeah, confirm. So that's how rotate works. I've actually moved this point that was up in the north and I send it down into the south. Let's rotate for you. Erase, okay, simply erase means to delete. So select your object, hit E, it brings it, erase, enter, and it's gone. But the object must be selected. Or another way we can erase, I sometimes just select the object and press delete on the computer. That's how I do it. If you're looking for the icon, because you guys like to see these icons and to have a little read of what Arkea has to say on the tools they provide, no. Oh. Can you look there for a while? But erase is just what it is. To remove, to delete, to get rid of. All right, let's go on to another editing tool called Philip. For this, I'm going to draw some lines. Um, all right, draw that line, draw that line. And I draw these random lines here, all right? Now, I want to create intersections. So what Philip does is saying, hey, I want to extend to here, right? But I don't want to drag that handle every time I want to extend. So I can use a tool called Philip, or if I want to extend the two of these to where they meet, I don't want to have to do this and then turn around and then do that. And I only wanted that, I mean, that's ridiculous. That's that's really time consuming. I mean, you can you can do it, but if you have a whole project where you have a bunch of lines like that, and you want to create the intersections at a, a perpendicular intersection, you will be advised to learn the fillet tool. So let's go. First, let's look for it here as an icon. Nope, that's not it. Is it here? Yep, it's right there. Fill it. And then I'm going to get you guys into filleting wrong surfaces. Yeah, just fill it there. All right, let's go. So I'm going to hit F to fill it. That's the shortcut. Select this line and select that line and look at what happens. Or before I confirm, look at what happens. I can go there to that line or I can even go fill it to here, or I can fill it to there. And look at what happens when you try to fill it to parallel lines. That's what happens. You can fill it to there and it goes to that edge. It will go to that edge. It will go there. But if you try to fill it to parallel lines, that's what happens. <laughs> Interesting. It just connects them, but the only way we can connect two parallel lines is to create a curve a semicircle to join these two parallel lines in reality, right? Um, I mean, you can join them with a perpendicular line, but no, that's, I wouldn't try to join two parallel lines by filleting. 
I just well, I would just probably put in the circle there, but it's good to know. So I'm going to fill it this here, because that's what I wanted to do. And then I'm going to repeat that command again by pressing space bar. And I want to fill it here to there. And I'm going to fill it here to there. So yeah, that's what fillet does. Now let's explore another option within the fillet tool. So I'm going to go F again to fill it, and I'm going to type in radius. So I'm going to type in R, and I'm going to specify a radius of 100. Yeah, and look at, let's see what happens here. One, okay, 100 is too big, so I'm going to F R, and I'm going to come down to 40. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. Bam, I can fill up that with a radius of 40. So I joined these lines before I made them perpendicular. And now I've created an arc in there that is tangent to this line and also tangent to here. So that's what Philip does. Yeah, let's go again, hit enter and have some fun here like that, yeah. Look at that, ooh. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, right. Uh, yeah, like that. See, so we just join in those lines there um, that would normally join with a perpendicular edge, which is 90 degrees, by the way. That's what perpendicular means. We join in those there with a fillet, but we um, specify the radius. We entered a radius of, I think that was 40 millimeters. So that's what it looks like. So that's just exploring the fillet tool. So we have done the trim. We've done the fillet, the erase. Okay, we've done the extend. Let's go chamfer. Chamfer. Interesting. So I'm going to clear away some of these. Delete. And let's get a new set of lines up so that I can explore chamfer. All right, da, da, da. Again, it deals with corners. Fillet and chamfer has to deal with the treatment of corners. So I'm gonna go chamfer and I can go that and that and I get a fillet. So you can actually get fillet in the chamfer menu, but I wouldn't come into chamfer to fill it. I just wouldn't. Um, Wrong command, sorry about that. CH, CH, A, chamfer. Um, where would I see it up here on the menu? It's right here, so I'm going to first let you guys have a look. And you can read. And have an understanding of what chamfer is all about. So, so if you even look here in this example where these two orange arrows are pointed, you can see before, if you just fill it, it will connect lines one to lines two, and it would have taken that path that's dotted. But with chamfer, it actually takes another path. So it create, you have to specify an angle in between, or you can specify a distance in between so that it would create this, this sort of a diagonal line that connects one and two. So let's work, explore the chamfer. So I am going to specify a distance. So let's specify a distance again of 40. And let's see, and the, that, that's the first distance of 40. And then the second distance is 40. That allows us to then determine that both the distances from here to there, there minus 40, and also at this junction too. So let's repeat this. Let me just copy this so that we can understand what happened there. I'm just going to bring that up. And I'm going to remove that. So that's chamfer. This go distance again. 40 is my first distance and my second distance. Let's put in a different number like 60. Let's observe what happens. Aha, you see. So the first distance that is 40 lines up with where the 40 is for the first distance. But look at what happens for the 60. That distance is, is, is different. These two lines aren't parallel. So that tells you that um, the properties are different in these connections, right? 
So let's go again. Let's copy. Let's copy this. Just bring it up here to be say. Yeah, give yourself some freedom. And let's chamfer. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to chamfer C H A chamfer. And at this time now, I'm going to work with an angle. Let's so go A for angle. And I'm going to specify an angle of 30. And then the second angle of 60 degrees. So that's the an angle of 30 degrees and then an angle of 60 degrees. And you can see how that is different again. I'm going to copy this just so that you guys can kind of get a understanding of how this tool works. Um, let me bring it down here, remove this line, and let's chamfer. Let me use an angle. Let me use an angle of 45. And let me use an angle of just a random one of 88. Hold that ever that works. So, no, that can't work out. <laughs> OK. If angle, let's use 50. Six and 23. I know it's just falling numbers, and that's what happens, you see. So you can see these two were created by using the angle tool, and these two were created using um, the distant tool. Now, there are other tools in the chamfer menu there's polyline, there's distant, there's angle, there's trim, there's method. And there's multiple, excuse me. I would suggest just using distance and angle. Um, yeah, that's true. Let's move on to another tool now. So I think we have covered all the tools on the left hand side. Let's go to some of the tools on the right hand side now. So let's lengthen. Lengthen just means to extend the line so I can even keep some of these lines here, and I'm going to type L E N, lengthen. I select the line and uh, select the line, enter, and uh, uh, that helps me to specify total length. So if I want a total length of 100, okay, so it, 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 it cut it off of 100, I guess. So instead of lengthening this thing, it actually reduced my line. Interesting. Um, okay, if I touch here, that lengthens by 100. That lengthens by 100. That lengthens by 100. So it's interesting. If I touch, depending on, okay, so for these diagonal, ah, it depends on where I touch. It determines where it wants to go, all right? If you can see here, if I touch here, it goes in that direction, and if I touch lower property of the line, it goes in the opposite direction, and it goes at 100 because it specified 100. So that's lengthen. Hatch. Now, in order for us to hatch, we have to have a closed object. So the best way to, dis to, to demonstrate how to hatch is I'm going to use this um, polygon that I have here on the screen. Hatch. Let's go hatch. Let's see. Where is the, the hatch tool? that I can show you. Because I know you guys, some of you guys like to look at these icons. Um, is it here? I think this is Hatch Edit. Um, anyway, I normally don't go in there when I want Hatch. I just type the word Hatch or just type H and my Hatch comes up. Hatch just fills in here. So if you guys are accustomed to using any editing program, you will know that Hatch is like a fill. And it can come up here and I can specify various patterns. I can have a solid, a gradient, or uh, whatever. But those aren't the patterns that I was looking for. Right, hatch patterns here. These are the patterns which actually give us um, various hatch patterns. So like for example, this one is a brick, but this one is at scale one. You might need to put that 0.25 for us to actually see that, right, the big formation in there. You can even go lower, 0 0.025. Yeah, you can see it's right there. Um, so that is hatch pattern, and we can just uh, come up with, you can just explore the various patterns there that you like. Um, 
curve dash. But I would advise you not to create dense hatch patterns because they take up too much um, resources on your CPU. So just, if anything, leave hatching for last. That's hatching there. That creates a pattern over the surface, but you must have a closed um, shape to hatch. Divide. Interesting. Divide now. I think for this one, I am going to divide a line. So I'm going to bring this line out, detach this line from everybody, and that's right there. And I want to divide this line. So I want to divide this line into seven pieces. So I'm going to select the line and then type the IV. That is the hotkey to divide. And uh, I select the line again. And then it asks me, enter the number of segments or block. I want seven, enter. And that appears. You might, you guys might divide something and you do not see the indicators. That simply means that you do not have your point system set up. So let me stop right now and introduce you guys to the point system. How to set up your point style. You type P O I. No, um, P type. P T Y. Right, P type stands for point type. And in here is where you set your point style. Normally, the computer defaults with this, what I call a speck of dust. So if I hit OK, you will look here and you will clearly see nothing. So you wouldn't even have any idea that I just divided this line into seven pieces. So I'm going to go back into the P type menu, P T Y P E. That's the option. And I'm going to set up my point style. I actually like this one, a circle with an X through it, and I keep mine at point size two. You can increase the size depending on what you guys like. I like two, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's just there, it's really subtle. I don't want it to be loud. Set size relative to screen. Now if you set absolute to screen, um, what happens is as you tend to zoom around the screen, it changes in size to match the zoom factor that you're using. So I just keep it at set size relative to screen. That's good for me and let me pop back up. So that's how I know that I have divided that surface. Now there's another way you can get that point. You can either call it up if you want to locate or you want to remember any point on your screen or any point on a line. Like say I want to mark this point right here. For me to get that, I type POI and I get point enter. And then I just tap a point right here, and that gives me my point. If I want a point on this midline, I can stamp it in. And I always say enter to repeat the last menu or the last command that I'm using. So this is it's fairly useful to create points there. And even if you delete the lines, the points will still be there. That's what I like about this. So they're not gone with the lines. Um, <clears throat> that's divide. Distance. Distance now is a quick way to measure a line before actually going to dimension. Because when you measure using dimension, you actually leave the dimension on, which is 164 there. Now, in this case, I don't want to leave the dimension on. I just want to quickly reference the measurement of this line. So what I'm going to do is go the I. And that brings up distance, D-I-S-T, that's short for distance. And if you look here, you can see the icon. Um, I don't know where it is up there on my menu, but if you look here in the command bar and you see D-I standing for distance, just before the word, sorry, the two characters, the D and the I, you will see an icon, and that's what it looks like. It's a ruler with a dimension above the ruler. So I specify my first point, then I specify my last point. And then I look here at my command bar and I can see that says that my line distance is 164. If you look right down there, it says distance equal 164. All right, so that's how I always, that's how I use that tool. When I want to just grab a quick distance at any point in time. Mirror, now, Mirror, mirror, mirror is reflection. Reflection, reflection. So I have this object here. 
And okay, let me just remove some of these objects. Let me just deal with this one. Now I want to reflect this object and create uh, well, basically a duplicate or I can reflect this on a particular surface. So if you can think of reflection in mathematics, you wouldn't understand how mirror works. Let me just go over the mirror icon and let's have a read. Okay, mirror creates a mirrored copy of selected objects. You can create objects that represent half of a drawing, select them and mirror them across to a specific line to create the other half. That's the best way to explain it. Or I can create a whole object. Yes, like this now I'm gonna go mirror, MI, and I'm gonna select here, but I'm gonna select this point here as my mirror line. And look at what happens. It mirrors it right like that. So. If I now wanted to select, so I'm going to mirror that again, and I'm going to use another mirror line like right here. And you can see that's my mirror line. And it asks me a question, do I want to erase my source object? Yes or no, and I go no, that means I want to keep that object. So I'm going to draw a line right, right here. And then another line going up right there. And I'm going to mirror every, I'm going to mirror the line and the two um, shapes right on this um, vertical line. So I'm going to go MI, select my objects, one, two, enter, and set up my mirror line here. Look at what happens. Do I want me to erase source objects? No. And that creates a direct copy using this axis as my mirror line. Yeah, that's my mirror line there. And that's it. Nice and easy. R, A, R, C. They type A to get that command R. Uh, I wouldn't really use that, but I'm gonna show you how to use it. You can also come up here and uh, look at it there. You can draw an R. Um, some people associate arcs with circles. When you think of arcs, you think of circles. So this creates an arc using the center point, start point, and the length of the chord. All right. Um, Let's, let's look at this some more. So I'm going to specify here, this is my start point. And it draws the card first and it tells me, where do you want to go? And I want to go right here. And then, uh, then I can then shape my art by influencing my art by pulling on this line here. So you can create an art from there to there. Art from there to there. But you will see the main thing is that it, Whatever I do, the art will always be pinned to this point because this is my second point. So I can then pull the art to there and it will still be pinned to that point there. So I'm gonna put a point POI right here and I'm gonna draw out the art again. But this time I'm gonna use the art options from the menu here. And here are the options that I would recommend you guys learn. Learn these three options, star, center, end, our start center angle, our start center length. We want to just use the start center length. I'm going to use start center end, right? So I'm going to come here again, start. I'm going to go here, center, and I'm going to go here, end. All right? And look at that. That end should have been here. Anyway, let's go, let's go again. Start. Here's my center, center, and there's my end. Oh, you see, well, based on the center, you see, this is funny. Based on where you select the center, which is like the radius, the, 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 uh, and the real center of the art, it then, it then determines where the end would be, because the end has to be on the opposite side to where the beginning is. So you don't really get much control using that option. So I don't recommend that. Yeah, I would just recommend uh, um, you start center length. So I can start here, and uh, this is my center. And uh, this is my length, as simple as that. You know, start, that's the center there, and that's the length. Or right, another option that I can explore, which is just the generic one, start, 
pull a point. I like this one. You ping the point there, and you can go in any direction, and that point, it, it just must be, everything must, everything is determined or influenced by where you set at the point and how far you pull the line. So I like that. I like this option. I would recommend if anyone want to use or learn the R2, use three point. Use three point. Can't go wrong with three point. Anyway, let's get out of here and we move on to a rear. I would not recommend using a rear. Let me just use a rectangle. So I've created a rectangle like right here, one rectangle. Let's use a rear. A R. Enter. Um, but before we go to array, let's look here at what it does. Distributes object copies into any combination of rows, columns, and levels. That, that's what it does. So I select the object, hit enter, and uh, I take R for rectangular. And look at that. Yeah, that's it. So I just create a series of copies, and if I want to go in this direction, I go in that direction. Look, I can then pull all these copies out here. And if I want to go up, I can pull them up like this off that same object. So whatever object I create, I can create a series of copies in using the array. And hey, look, guess what? This is the array options. So you can create columns and determine how many are columns, what was the space between them. So I can probably put space like 50. You can see um, row, I'm gonna put five. You can see it's changed there. So I'm gonna put seven now. Um, it goes back up. Um, so this is the array options here, the array options here for that uh, rectangle that I've just drawn. And those are under rectangle options. So let's just go again. Let me, let me create a polygon this time. And just seven sided polygon, E for edge, because I just want to just get something on the screen good. And I'm going to use a rear. Click here, select my object, enter. And look at that. Before I even go anywhere, they've already given me a set there. Um, I don't use this tool. I know how to use it, but I don't really use it. Um, I don't have any major use for it in day-to-day -day activities, but I would advise you guys to explore this some more. It's, if you are into making patterns or you want to create patterns, probably understanding the array tool would be beneficial. Um, yeah, let's go seven. Okay, just add more there. Right, right, right. So I can just delete that and just get that out. And you just delete these two. Um, point. I think I've gone through point, ready? Yeah, we have done point. And insert, 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 insert. Now, I, I don't think I use insert a lot. OK, insert is, I, I've created this title block here, right? which has name, title, and date. Let me just refresh the screen. R, E, enter is the shortcut to refresh or to regenerate the screen. If your point still gets out of control, like what just happened there, I'm just gonna zoom out quickly and then zoom back in so you guys might see some of the, no, you don't. Well, sometimes when you're out really far and you zoom in, right, you get this effect. Um, and a lot of people get really frustrated, don't know what to do, think that the computer is freaking out. No, you just need to refresh the screen. And uh, the, the real, the correct term is you need to regenerate the screen, but I teach my students to remember the word refresh because I think it would be easy for them to remember. So RE is a shortcut to regen or refresh the screen, enter, and that just clears that up. Now, let's get back to the command insert I. So insert, enter, and this comes back here to these tags, title block. So I can insert um, whatever I want to put here, my title block. And let me just go uh, title block, Raymond. And enter. Back 
one. Okay. Um, honestly, this looks like something I will never use. I would just come here and just edit, double click there, and I would just put my name there. And voila! <laughs> I would not just use insert. Uh, text. I text, you can come out here to the text. I see that text. And I usually prefer, instead of going single line text, I would advise everybody to work with multi text. Multi text. Multi text is the best option. Uh, I want to create, yeah, I think for this, for me to explain multi text, let me use, let me create a rectangle, REC, so that you guys can really appreciate. Uh, Right, so say this were a room and I wanted to put a label in this room. So I wanted to call in here, um, box. And I want to label it. I will go M key, which is the shortcut for multi-text, enter. And I will create a text box starting in the corner. And I will create that. And I will type the word, um, stuck in the box, so that's the phrase, stuck in the box. And then what would I do? I will come here to justification and I will go to middle center MC and that's what happened. It puts that directly smack into the middle. And if I want to increase the size, I can come here and I can bump that up to 10 and I can then close it, close. And that's it, stuck in the box. And that's that. If I want to edit that and just have the word box, sure, I can do that. All right. Generally, how I use these, I just go empty. And sometimes I just empty for text. And I just attach them there and that will be like point 0.1. I would just go one. And that would be like that. And instead of me always reusing, or sorry, instead of me always starting up the multi-text menu, every time I want a point, I just usually copy. So I want that, so I will copy that there. And then what I would do is I will edit there. So if I want that's point one, I will double click. That will be point two. Then I would double click here. That would be point three. I think it's better because I wouldn't have to always be shifting the properties. And that's just generally how I work. I make one text uh, box and then I just copy it around all the time, like that. Um, Multi-line, why would we use multi-line? Multi-line is similar to offset. If you want to offset, um, if you remember what I explained offset was, let me go here again, offset, and let's go 10, this is what offset is. All right, it creates a parallel frame, it creates parallel length. Multi-line does the same thing, but I would not advise using multi-line because you have to set up the multi-line from the start. So you're right, and that's my multi-line. As I draw, I can draw like that. So I can draw. It's very good if you want to draw floor plans fast. So it allows me to draw and create, you know. It allows me to draw and just create walls, wall thicknesses like that. And I wonder if I can trim. Can I trim that? Yeah. No, it's getting a lot of problems trimming. That's why I generally don't work with this tool because you can't trim so easily. Seeing that this comes in as a block, as one formation, if I want to trim this, I will have to explode this. EXP, explode right here, just means to break this into particles so that these are all single lines. Now everything is in a unit. It's no longer a whole. These are all individual um, units, uh, individual lines. So I can trim. Now like that. Okay, if I wanted to trim. But generally, I don't use that tool, that multi-line tool, but I had to explain it for the sense of this class, of this demonstration. So now we have gone through the 
um, drawing tools and the modifying tools, we need to move on to what happens down here at this status bar. So let's, let me maximize this. And uh, let's just look at this status bar down here. What do we see? We see no model. And we keep it in model or we can go into layout. That's, there's a layout, like when you're ready to print, I would not advise anyone ever working in layout. So let's go back to model. We can click back, you can click this tab model or we can click right here model from paper. We go back to model. Now, here is our grid. Our grid, we turn it on and turn it off. If you look there, we do not see the grid lines in the background. Uh, controls the grid. This, this is our object snap. I'm sorry, this is our snap. And this determines where you're snapping. I usually do not try, I do not draw it out on because that's very annoying. So you would be trying to snap to this point here and you, you see it's moving very mechanical. It isn't moving like you are free. It is snapping to the points that are already set up with the grid. So this, this snap actually uses the, the lines on the grid to influence where it goes. So you are influenced heavily by this grid. Um, so that's what, how that works. You snap into the grid in the background. I usually work with that off. I never ever draw it out on. This next one, this is my ortho mode. What does this mean? If you are custom drawing with a T-square, this would be exactly what you are looking for. This allows you to draw a line straight, like what I'm doing here. So you see, I can draw a line directly vertical, I draw it at the conventional angles. Like this is the angle of zero and 180 degrees because it's a flat line. This is the, this would be, if I go up there, I would be going up on 90 degrees. Or if I come down, I'd be coming down at 270. If I go across, that's zero. If I go there, it's 180 and so forth. I'm drawing using the conventional um, 90 degree angles to get around the screen. That's with my ortho on. Let's take the ortho off and let's see what happens. Can go in any direction. You're not locked to any um, axis. And that's the, that's the beauty about this being off. So I normally draw with it on. And the hot key for that is F8 on your keyboard. All the hot keys are are all the hotkeys appear within brackets. So the hotkey for the grid mode is F7, it's there. For this is F9, and for this is F8. Polar tracking. Um, I, I generally don't really draw with this on. Restricts cursor to specify angles, right? It, see, it restricts the cursor. So I, I generally don't draw anything that would restrict my cursor like that, especially when I'm looking at angles. So that can go on or go off. And look at you can spec, you can set the cursor to restrict by these angles. It's even as like you get an angle of five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and it goes up. You can set it up. So I have my cursor restricted to the 90, 180, 270, 360, like I explained before. Um, so this is another restriction mode. This is ISO drafting. If you click that on, okay, let me get out of this line menu. If I click that on, that allows me to draw in my drafting, in my um, isometric mode. Like I can draw a cube. Right here, I can draw. I can draw three-dimensional objects, so I can just draw something quickly in 3D. Oops. Well, we'll work with this. Okay, I can change the directions of my ISO mode to top, left, or right. I'm going to go top and just bring that there. Well, easily, I'm just creating a three-dimensional object. I just using my isometric drafting mode. And that's a three-dimensional object. If I wanted to make this 
um, more realistic. I'll remove these lines because you will not be seeing those lines. And that's what it will look like there. So that's my ISO drafting mode. I have a tutorial explaining how to use this tool. You will check that out on my channel. Look at the isometric construction. Yeah, that's what it is. To turn it off, to get back to our normal autographic mode, you click here and that turns it off. So when it's gray, that's off. Um, this now is an object snap tracking. Um, object snap tracking on. I, I really don't use this. So I would turn it off. This menu, the object snap menu, this is a whole menu that everyone needs to understand. You need to understand this menu, how this menu operates. So if you look here, you can see that they've, they're representing everything either on a line or a circle. So what does this mean, end point? If I turn this off, first thing, let me turn it. Let me draw a line using my end point. And I see that, that's so I've drawn a line. Let me draw a line again. That's the line there. And let me hover over my end point and see what happens. It says end point and it's a square, a green square. If I hover there, it says end point. If I hover there in the middle, it says midpoint. So this actually gives you an indicator as to where you can snap onto a line. So if I turn off my end point, let's see what happens. If I hover over my endpoint, nothing happens. That's disabled. So I would never be able to snap to the edge of this line. No matter how I'm trying to move it, I wouldn't be able to snap. So if I hover over my line, the only thing that's available, the only place that's available for me to click is my midpoint. Now, if I come here and I turn off my midpoint, it is really hard for me to move this line. It is looking for some deferred uh, perpendicular. And if I turn off perpendicular now, it's going to be really hard. Like, I don't even know how to, where I would be able to touch or how would I be able to even move this line or even draw something and attach to this line because these options are all. So this object snap menu gives you extra options for you to work with when you want to uh, move a line, when you want to attach something to a line, when you want to copy. So. These are the um, object snap settings that I work with. I work with endpoint, midpoint, center. Center works best for um, solid objects, like block objects or polygons or even circle. Yeah, center works best for circle. If we want to grab a circle in the middle, we would use midpoint, we would use center. Um, there's node. Node refers to a point on a circle. Quadrant. Uh, the, this refers to the, the compass points on the circle, the north, south, west, east points of a circle. Intersection. All intersection means is that here, this is an intersection right there where two lines meet. And every icon has its own. Sorry, every icon is represented different. This is represented by X. And if you look back here, you will be able to see the icons appear right here, the X. That's for intersection. Um, extension, I use that. I use tangent and I use apparent intersection. All right, these are my object settings. And if I come here, I can click and I can go into a menu which has the same settings or similar settings. And then we can, in this drafting settings menu, we have snap and grid. Um, for the tracking, object snap, mm -hmm. 3D object snap, 3D object snap. You'll be using that if you were drawing um, in a 3D menu. Uh, dynamic input, quick properties, excuse me, selection, cycling. All right. Um, to access that menu, you can go F3 to turn on and turn on, turn on and turn off that menu is F3, right? Um, but to access the menu, you can press this arrow next to the same object snap, and that allows you to access that. Or you can just type the word object snap. Object snap, right there. 
and that allows you to access the menu. Um, I wouldn't get into these other icons. These aren't necessary at this moment to draw. So we have gone through the status bar and we have gone through the object snap menu. Let's now move on to, we're coming close to the end. Let's look at how the mouth the mouse operates, the mouse settings, the mouse movement. So we can grab, let's first, all right, let's first deal with the left button of the mouse. If I touch the left button of the mouse and hold it down, I can dry and I can create this weird net, this weird selection. If I'm just holding down that, a lot of students like to play with this at time, from time to time, but this does nothing. So just get it in your head. It makes no sense to hold down the mouse button and pull it. You wouldn't get very far with that technique. So if you like doing that, forget it. Now, if I want to select an object, there are two ways to select an object. Say I want to select just these points in here, right? I can just pick them like that, and I can just pick them like that. And I can, or I can select them by creating a blue net, which starts in the top corner. So you start this by going, mm, how to explain it? You click on your mouse, you left click on your mouse, and you can either start a selection by going left or by going right after that click. That determines what type of selection. Now, a blue selection only selects things that the box goes over. So that's why this line isn't selected because the box, the blue box is only passing over this point. So let's go. So let's release these other points and let me go here and show you. So the blue box goes over there and it goes over this point and it goes over that point, that point and that point there. So these points are selected by using the blue grab. Now I'm going to use another grab technique. If I come here and look, the green grab, and I barely but touch this line, the whole line is selected. And if it, anything the green grab touches, it selects. It doesn't have to, it just touches it. So that's how green grab works. Once it just passed through it, it will select it. So probably for me to best explain that would be like right here at this corner. I just want to green grab and look. I'm just selecting all these things by just moving a green grab through them. So you've got look at how many things I have selected by just green grabbing. Now, if I were to come here and blue grab, I don't have that many things selected, as you can see. It's, it's completely different. If I green grab, so many things are selected. So the green grab selects multiple things by just touching, but just the grab just has to touch the surface and it will select that whole entire object. Whereas blue grab, you have to put the cursor over the entire object for it to be selected. So if I blue grab like here, I can just select these lines because that's where my blue grab frame went up to, up to that point. So let's do that again. Look, one of these lines will be selected. Now, a green grab. Oh, one of these lines are selected, but that's because the green grab never touch. So look at that green grab. So ah, this is probably, look at this. Look at how I'm green grabbing just through here and that has selected nearly everything. But if I were to blue grab, I only select this one line. But by green grabbing, I can select everything that it touches. So that explains the blue and green grab selection. What happens when I touch the middle button of the mouse? That allows me to zoom, zoom all the way out, out to infinity. This doesn't stop by the way, or zoom all the way in. And this is what happens. So if you remember guys, if this happens to you, don't panic, just refresh the screen, RE, enter. And that allows you to just, and if you zoom in again and you still see it there, RE, Again, to keep refreshing, keep R in, to get it back to normal. That's how you regenerate your model. Um, so that's the middle button that allows you to scroll or zoom. If you hold down that button, you're able to palm your drawing around. You're able to palm yourself around the screen. 
So you're holding that and moving your mouse at the same time. That allows you to palm. Uh, let's see what happens when we right click. When we right click, we bring up a menu, an option menu. What happens in this option menu? Well, you can repeat your last command. You can look at your recent inputs, like your history. You can go clipboard. You can go isolate. Um, you can zoom from here. Um, you can go quick calculation if you want to do some mathematics. You can search. Or you can, uh, what I like to do is to select an object or a line and then right click. Look at what happens. It brings up this, it brings you, brings up the properties or the quick properties. What this properties do? What, what happens when we bring the property menu? That allows us to see many things related to that line. Like for example, where is this line? What layer is this line drawn under? And it's drawn under the construction. We can actually use this um, opportunity to change a layer. So I can change that layer to let's say my hidden, hidden line. Um, hidden line represented objects that might be hidden in the background. So that's a, that's a way we can tweak the properties of, of the line. If I come here, I can see the length of the line, which is 100. Um, I can see the angle. So it's going straight up. That's the 270 angle. Uh, I can see the line type of the line. So it's um, by layer and the layer that is under is a hidden layer. So I can read m multiple things here about this. But what I like this option for is mainly when we have circles. So if I created a circle, I'm going to hit C and I create a circle. And I just wanted to see what size is this circle. I can click here and go quick properties. And it tells me everything about the circle, the radius, the diameter, the circumference, the area. Just like that, all the information I need to know by just selecting the object and right clicking. And I can go properties or I can go quick properties. Uh, properties has in more things to read, more information. Honestly, I rather go quick properties. Go quick properties just has in the essentials, exactly what I need. And you can switch things in your quick properties too. You can switch, you can like switch over to hidden, to outline, to text. You can change the layers. Uh, hmm. Let me see if I change my diameter to 150, what happens? That changes. If I change by just if I just want to change the circumference to so let's say for hundred, but that changes, you know, so you can influence the circle by going into properties and messing around with the options in there. <clears throat> So that is how we work the mouse. Um, I have an image here that I can show you, to you guys. Yeah, the left button is to pick, is the pick button that is used to pick or select from the toolbar, or drop down menu. The right or return button, when click during the carrying out of your command can act as the enter or return key. Yeah, so that's an extra option there that I forgot to mention. In addition, if the control, which that's a shortcut on your keyboard, CTRL button is held, and the right or return button press, the snap option becomes available. Ah, okay. The wheel button performs various functions allows the joint to be automatically zoomed in or out if rolled forward or backward. Uh -huh. If pressed and held down, right, I explained this already, we can palm ourselves around. Um, <clears throat> if double click quickly, it performs a zoom extent. So let me explain how this zoom extent works. So if I'm all out here and I'm over here and I want to get back to the center, um, or bring all my drawing into a window where we can see everything at one time. I can click here, zoom extents, and it brings back everything into focus, into a frame. Or what they're saying is you can just double click on the wheel and it will do the same thing. Um, now, so if I hold on control and right click, this brings another menu. Uh-huh, see, I never knew that. 
I never had any reason to hold on control and click. Uh, this menu could be useful. End point, midpoint. Um, yeah. So I would encourage you guys to explore. You might find new ways of drawing or more efficient ways, faster ways. Just explore, explore, explore. So that's the mouse. And lastly, let's work with a few keys here that we need to know. Escape. What does escape do? If I start a command and then I realize, hey, you know what? I made a mistake and I want to refresh. I want to clear my command bar. I press escape and it comes up as cancel. Also, if I have finished a command, I press enter. So let's work with a command called spleen. I'm going to go SPL spleen and I'm going to create a line from here. And this creates curved lines like that and that and here. Let's go around to this point and then that point and then there. And then I want to bring it back to where I started. I can press enter and that will stop me right here, right? Now, if I want to close it, I can press C to close. But if I want to stop that command, I will press Enter, and it will finish right there. So let me just remove this thing, and I'm going to redraw it. But I'm going to close it and show you sometimes why we can't press Enter. We have to press C. So I'm just going to recreate this path. And I want to bring it back to here. So I'm going to press C and then Enter. And look, it closes that. It creates a complete shape. So this is my shape here, right, using spleen. Um, and I'm showing you how to use the enter and the escape command. Now, if I wanted to redraw that same, use that same command again, I have an option. I can press the enter key or I can press the same space bar key. Space bar and enter at like the same command. That allows me to repeat the tool that I'm using. So again, I'm gonna use the spleen and just show you guys show off this tool. This is an advanced tool, by the way. This allows you to draw, I hit enter, comes out there. This allows you to draw curved lines. This is what people will call a polyline. So this is a polyline tool. All right. Um, so that's my space bar, enter and escape key. Explain. And lastly, I would always advise persons when join, Please, please pay attention to the command bar. It always prompts you. It gives you the information. It gives you instructions to follow. It tells you what's the next step, basically. So if I wanted to draw a line, I will hit L for line, and it will tell me specify first point. And I will go there, and then it will say specify the next point. Where's my end point? And I've finished. Now, if I want to finish here, now this is where enter and escape comes in. If I hit enter, that closes that. That that command is finished. Also, if I had hit escape, that command would have finished. And I finished there, and I hit escape. That also closed that command. So enter and escape can be interchange. Can use to mean the same thing to finish. A command once you finish. But the reason why I would tell you guys to be careful with the escape is because I've seen students create a spleen, SPL, spleen, um, like this. And when they get to the closing point, like when it's supposed to come here, they hit escape and the whole thing disappears. They actually cancel the, the command rather than complete it. So please be careful when using your escape and when using your enter key. I would like to stress that again. Um, I'm going to come here and just flash up what these icons look like so that you guys will be familiar. Just to recap now, so that's what the line tool looks like. If you like um, drawing with the toolbar, that's the, what the polygon looks like. The rotate, the fillet, Offset, circle, rectangle, trim, chamfer. This one has no label, but this is erase. There's arc, undo, extend, and move. Now, those are some basic tools. Let's look at these line types now, because we could just wrap up by looking at some line types. I've used 
a center, I've used a visible line tonight and I've used hidden lines. Hidden lines will represent um, or indicate concealed edges. And I'm going to use my marker to show you what I mean right here at this point. So this is an edge here. And this edge is represented with a hidden line here on this drawing. So this edge that no one be able to see because this is underneath the shape is represented right here as a hidden line. Um, center lines, I'm going to come here. This goes to the center of an object. And they are represented with a thin line made up of long and short dashes, alternatively spaced and consistent in length. OK? This is a visible line, which is a continuous line. You can see it right here. So that shape is visible. We, we can see it. Nothing hidden about that. Extension line um, right here. And these work well with dimensions. The dimension lines now, they have the arrowhead onto them. So the extension lines, thin and broken lines, used to indicate extent of dimensions, right? So the extension and dimension lines work together. The extension lines set at the boundaries. So I'm just going to show us the boundaries here. And the dimension lines show the distance from one boundary to another boundary, like from there to there. Yeah, that's it for that. So that's it for that. Let's see now. Um, what else do I have here that I can explain? Well, before I wrap up this tutorial, this was a long tutorial, guys, but I thought it necessary. Yes, I've gone through my shortcuts for all of those. Right. Um, I would encourage you guys to get familiar with these um, shortcuts because these shortcuts are what save you a lot of time. Learning and understanding shortcuts along with drawing with the proper layers, putting things into your layers, so I've been drawing on my construction layer, but if I wanted to, I can transfer. Oh, let me show you how to transfer these over into layers. So I can select things here, and I can just go up here to my layer manager, pull down on whatever layer you want to pull them in once they're selected. I can just touch that layer. Oh, something quickly before I close. It's probably the last thing. If I come here, and I want to put something into the layer, I need to click out here in the blue, in, sorry, in this gray area, in this gray region. If I click the word, that would suffice. That and the gray region is one option. If I click here, that changes the color for my layer, right? Look at that. You see the layer, the color changes to uh, um, uh, some form of a moss green. And I can change it back to what I had it to, which was number 11 right there. Now, another option, if I come here and I turn this layer off, that means that layer isn't visible at all. So let me do that. Let me go there and I turn that layer off. Sorry, let me go back, right. These are the things I want to turn off my outline layer. So which are these? So I'm gonna come here and then just hit the bulb and they disappear. The bulb is off, so that means they're not on. So that is another option. And here is the option to freeze um, or to lock. What locking does? Locking means that you can draw over that layer and you can erase. All right, let me just explain. Let me just explain this. So I'm going to turn on this layer, and I'm going to lock that now. Lock, All right? So that means I can't delete that layer. It's locked. I can't do anything about that layer. I can't touch that layer. Can I move it? No. That layer is completely locked. And anytime I try to interfere with the layer, the icon comes up that it is locked. All right? I can't trouble that layer. So that layer is like... um branded or just stuck onto the background, stuck onto the virtual background, which is the black. <laughs> That's what locking does. You can't touch the layer once it's locked, which is a good thing and a bad thing. 
So this is to turn the layer on and turn it off. This is to freeze the layer. I do not use this. I use it twice, but just work with turn on and turn off layers. And if you want to drop any lines, if you want to transfer lines to another layer, you select. And again, I tell you, you come here, I, you must touch the, the name of the layer. If you touch here, you would turn off that layer and it will be a fault selection because you want to transfer these three lines into a layer. So you must touch the name or touch over here in the gray. That's how it's done. All right, until next time. If you like this video, please share it with others. Like the channel, subscribe, sorry, like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. Anyway, guys, I'm out.